Megan Fox. Yeah, Megan Fox has the story. Megan Fox. Megan Fox. Megan Fox writes at PJ Media. Eat Tucker. Come in with your last. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> I cried for two days. <laughs> Megan, thank you very much for that. So, um, <laughs> I can, I can explain the bed thing. <laughs> if you don't show up and vote, up your ass. Like Jesus going to the temple, he's like, I got a whip! <laughs> get out! Get, get out! out! The lovely and wonderful Megan Fox. Not that hey. one. <laughs> Not that one. <laughs> Not the weird one that drinks blood in his toe thumb. Megan Fox. Megan. And honestly, Megan, if you don't like it, I'm sorry. She's the devil. Megan. Megan Fox. Megan. Megan. Megan Fox. I've been very nice to you, although I could probably maybe not be based on the way you have treated me, but I wouldn't do that. You've never met a like me. You want to tangle? You want to go? Holy sh- Holy sh- too much cussing on this. I guess we didn't believe it, so we got to turn it off. But I just, it just, it's, it's. You pissed off the wrong woman. Oh my God! I have been assaulted when Megan Fox runs wild on you, brother. She's the devil. <laughs> <laughs> Not for publication. <laughs> the story. I'm Megan. 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 Megan Fox. Thank Cheers. you. Cheers. Mm. <laughs> Hey guys, oh my God, it was a late night. Mommy is tired. Do not mess around with me today. I will not take it. I have a headache. And it's funny, you know, I drank one, well, like a double bourbon last night. That's it. That's all I had all night long and water. So the headache is not from the bourbon. The headache is from trying to keep Nick on topic. It's like, it's like I imagine like having an ADH kid with Tourette syndrome and having him try to concentrate on math. You know, that this is, <laughs> that's what it's like. So uh, I have, my head is still pounding from all of that nonsense and from being up till four and then getting up again at six to get kids on the bus and then going back to sleep. I just rolled out of bed. Like it's, it's, this is as good as it's going to get today, folks. This is, this is, uh, <laughs> this is as good as it's going to get, but I had to come on. Because, yeah, you guys think I'm bad staying on topic? Holy shit. Don't go on with Nick Ricada. Don't, don't try that. <laughs> what, you couldn't tell, MG? You couldn't tell that I was trying desperately to keep him on topic? Um, yeah, it was good to see him, though. I haven't seen him in a long time. And it was good to see him. All right, so I am back with, I last night, the birthday stream was really fun, but I didn't get to really get uh, into the Tramp Stamp Lawyer's latest blog post, and I really want to do that. And I don't have a ton of time, so we're going to get straight to it, and I'm not going to let you derail me today, chat. It's not going to happen. No, no, no. i got to clean my glasses off, and then we're getting right to it. I don't know why my glasses are so dirty. Why do glasses get so dirty? I mean, it's almost like I need like a like a device that just cleans them as I wear them. I should have just put my contacts in. That would have been easier, but no, I opted for glasses. Okay. That's better. Now I can see. Now I can see. 
Yeah. And the weird thing is about this headache is that I literally had one double pour. That's it. It's, it's not a, it's not a, my, it's not a, uh, it's not a hangover. It's just a, it's a neck hangover. <laughs> There's two different kinds of hangovers. One you get when you drink from the bottle. The other you get when you go on the Nick Ricada show. All right, let's see. Let's get to it, shall we? So I have screenshots just in case he deletes things. I also want to get into the Trevor Bauer stuff today if I have time. All right, let's share this. <laughs> it's a Nick over. Yep. Yep. Yeah, lack of sleep probably. And not good sleep. I didn't have like good sleep, unfortunately. Oh, wait, hang on. This isn't going to work. Can I open this in a new tab? Yes. There we go. Share this tab instead. Now we got it. I like that trick Brad taught me. All right. This is uh, the Tramp Stamp Lawyer's new blog post, which, you know, all good lawyers have blogs, right? We know. <laughs> No, 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 no. Sorry. That was, I, that's my mistake. All terrible lawyers have blogs. Uh, blogging about your current case is never a good idea. This one's really weird. IT goatee, don't do it. I need to get out of here because my kids are going to be home in 40 minutes. So we have to keep this on track. Do not derail me today. If you're following the Owens V, oh, what does justice for Clayton look like? Let me tell you. Yeah, because this guy, Gingris, is the one to tell just, uh, tell Clayton what justice looks like. Sure. If you're following the Owens v. Eckerd case, you have probably seen a lot of folks talking about how they want to see justice for Clayton. There's a JFC Twitter account. There's a JFC GoFundMe page. I'm guessing JFC t-shirts are next. Idea? JFC condoms? This guy really thinks he's funny. But what exactly does justice for Clayton look like? At the end of the day, all that happened here from a legal perspective is Laura hooked up with a guy, Clayton, who she thought was interested in her. Oh, so she hooked up with him now. Is that correct? Now it's a hookup. This guy cannot keep his story straight. If you were watching Riketa last night, we went over that motion he filed for an extension where he put in an ARP allegation and tried to make that argument. Now we're back to, well, she hooked up with a guy and he wasn't interested. Sadly, it turned out that the feelings were not mutual. I forgot to start this the way I was going to, which is, dear diary, <laughs> this guy's talking to exactly three people. Sucks, but that's life. Laura claims she got pregnant. Ooh, that's a little different. Laura claims she got pregnant. Now she claims she got pregnant. He may be pulling it back a little, huh? Is he pulling it back from the, you know, vociferous defense of her that she absolutely is pregnant? She was pregnant. And I have all the records and I've seen her medical records and you haven't. Mm hmm. Laura claims she got pregnant and she did exactly what you would expect. No, no, David. No, she didn't do exactly what we expect. She did not do exactly what we expect in any way. You know what I expect? Jeez, the traffic is loud today. You know what I expect someone who gets pregnant on accident to do? Not behave like she did. Pretty much the opposite of what she did. Not send thousands of emails and text messages and crazy dating contracts. Yeah, no. Uh-uh. <laughs> MG says, I would never blog about a current case like this. Yeah, you think? It's a really bad idea. But he he persisted. <laughs> he persisted. I don't like this setup. I'm going to go down here. Yeah, that's better. Where's my logo? Why is my studio all screwed up? There it is. All right. Is this lawyer married? Yeah, I believe he is. I think so. Oh, no. I'm getting a phone call. I can't talk right now. All right. But what exactly? Oh, sorry. Laura claims she got pregnant. 
Yes, I know. She tried to talk. Okay, this is so funny. She claimed she got pregnant. She did exactly what you would expect. She tried to talk to Clayton about the situation. Yes, I know some people think she didn't handle this very well. That's fair. And I'm not judging your harsh opinions of Laura. Well, that's new. Because a few days ago, he was like, you're all going to get sued. I hope you have sleeping bags and tents to live in for our opinions on Laura. For saying that, you know, I don't know. She lied. She lied? <laughs> yes, I know some people think she didn't handle this very well. Sir, that's an understatement. That's fair. Well, thank you for being the arbiter of all that is fair and, and for validating our feelings about it. That's fair, and I'm not judging your harsh opinions of Laura. Of course, maybe you'd have a different view if you walked a mile in her shoes, as the saying goes. Walked a mile in her shoes. But here's the thing. This is a very strange twist of fate, but I have walked a mile in Clayton's shoes, literally. When I was in my mid-twenties, I hooked up with a girl on spring break. Days later, she called and said those two words you just don't want to hear in that situation. I'm pregnant. Just like Clayton, my initial response was, wait a second. We only hooked up once and that was like six days ago. How can you possibly know you're pregnant that soon? Bullshit. It sounded impossible, but she promised me it's possible. Unlike Clayton, this is the part where he's going to tell us what a great person he is. David Gingras, the greatest man on the face of the earth since Jesus Christ himself. Unlike Clayton, my response was very different. I told this young lady first and foremost, the decision about what to do was entirely up to her. I barely knew her, but I explained that if I was the father, I would absolutely do the right thing and support her in any way necessary. Oh my God. As a man, even a young one, I just couldn't imagine turning my back on my own child, no matter what the circumstances were. Well, the problem here is that Clayton never believed there were any babies. And yeah, this lawyer actually had sex with that woman. Clayton didn't. And also, in this story, there's an actual baby. Like, a baby appears. <sighs> Who would do that? It's not the child's fault that he, she came into this world unexpectedly. So the girl decided to keep the baby. Nine months later, she called again and asked me to send a picture of my earlobe. <laughs> oh man, I don't have a good button for this. Do I? Is there a button for this? I feel like I need a button for this earlobe something. What is my problem? Anybody who <laughs> would do anybody who would do a uh, paternity this way needs to get their head checked. To my shock and surprise, apparently there are two types of earlobes: attached and non-attached. So, do I have an attached or non-attached? Actually, I don't know. I think non-attached. To my shock and surprise, oh, oh, sorry, attached and not attached. And this is apparently a reliable way of determining paternity. If the child has an attached lobe and the mom does not, that means the father must have the same type as the kid because genetics. No idea if that's true, but Google seems to think it's 100% accurate. This guy, this guy is so weird. And I got to go to page two. There are many pages of this. This was 1996. Whoops. What? There we go. This was 1996. Phones didn't have cameras. Actually, I believe my phone did have a camera. In 1996, I had a flip phone at least. They had cameras. They just were, they looked like you took them on a potato, but there were cameras on phones. I probably mailed her a photo taken on film. I think everybody had those Nokia phones or a Blackberry. Blackberries had cameras. I probably mailed her a photo taken on film and dropped off at Walgreens. Sometime later, I got the call. 
you don't have the right kind of earlobes. You can't be the dad. In the year 2024, maybe I would have responded differently, but in 1996, I breathed a huge sigh of relief. How huge was it? <laughs> How huge was it, David? Extra large and extra hard. All right, I'm sorry. I, I apologize. <sighs> I feel like I'm doing ASMR voice today, but I have a headache, so I'm keeping it down. I'm keeping it down. I can't even project my voice because my head hurts. Uh, I breathed a huge sigh of relief. I went off to law school in 1997 thinking I dodged a bullet. Well, who wouldn't feel that way? I mean, I don't think there's anything shameful about feeling like you dodged a bullet when you actually dodged a bullet. Weird. Little did I know, 10 years later in 2006, that bullet would come back. I was sitting in my office on the 20th floor of an office building in Phoenix when the receptionist buzzed me. Um, yeah, David, there's someone here with some papers for you. Papers? By this time, I was a lawyer. And getting served with papers was hardly unusual. But not with my name listed as the respondent in a paternity establishment case. No, usually he's listed as the defendant. Usually his name is on the defendant side of the criminal charge. <laughs> Hashtag DUI lawyer. Oh, God. I, uh, let's see. I later learned my spring break fling had some personal problems. Well, your first sign was that she had a fling with you on spring break. <laughs> hmm. I think she ended up applying for public health benefits for her child. When that happens, the state of Arizona asks, hey, why should Arizona taxpayers have to pay for this kid? Where's the father? Let's find him and make him pay. So they asked the mom who the dad was and my name was given. This resulted in the Arizona Attorney General filing a paternity action against me on behalf of the Department of Economic Security. The allegations in the petition shocked me. David Gingras is the father of this poor, desperate child. David Gingras has abandoned his child. David Gingras has refused to pay any support for his child. I don't really believe that those words were in that document and he really should just publish that document because I think he's not telling the exact truth here. He's taking some poetic license. Since A, it was harsh to see those words in the legal filing, especially since A, the mom told me I was not the father and B, no one from the AG's office contacted me about this before the case was filed in court. You think they have enough time, David, to pick up a phone and call every deadbeat dad that they're reaching out to? No. Isn't there any due diligence requirement? Yeah, no. The requirement is to serve you. That's called due process. They don't have to call you first. The papers included us. He should know that. He's a lawyer. The papers included a summons with a court date, so I showed up in court without a lawyer. The judge, who I knew from other cases, asked me, so what do you want to do about this? This seemed like a strange question, but little did I know, Arizona law actually allows people to voluntarily admit paternity, even if they are not the biological parent of the child. It's kind of like adoption. Some people just want to be a parent to a child, even if it's not your child. That's what the judge meant when he asked what I wanted to do. This entire paragraph, by the way, is superfluous. No one needs this. No one needs to know this. And it's just wordy for the sake of being wordy, and it bothers me. I'm a generous person, but I couldn't see taking the responsibility for a child that wasn't mine. So I told the judge, we should just take a test and see what happens. So in other words, he decided to fight it, to get his justice. The AG had no objection, so we did a test, and guess what? The earlobe thing was 100% right. I was not the dad, at least for me. That was the end of that. So yes, exactly like Clayton. Maybe. I was wrongfully sued for paternity. Exactly like Clayton? Exactly like Clayton? Is he out of his damn mind? How is this exactly like Clayton? Wrong. You are fake news. For one, there's no baby. 
there's no baby to do a paternity test on. And she took three paternity tests, two of which came back little to no fetal DNA. This is insane. This is insane. This is literally insane. There's something wrong with this man. Not that we didn't know that before, but I'm just saying, this is crazy. But unlike Clayton, <laughs> here he goes again with the I'm Jesus Christ. <laughs> unlike Clayton, I didn't turn around and accuse the Arizona Attorney General's office of fraud. I didn't seek revenge. I didn't demand justice. You liar. Those are a bunch of lies. She lied? Because you absolutely did seek justice. You said, no, I'm not going to take responsibility for this kid. I want to test. Prove it. That's seeking justice. Go fuck yourself. But go fuck yourself. The AG's office made a good faith mistake. They relied on the best information available, and that information turned out to be wrong. Under the law, that does not mean I was automatically entitled to sanctions, which seems to be Clayton's attitude. The law never, ever requires people to be 100% perfect when they file a case in court. All that's required is a good faith basis to think your claims are probably true. If you can clear that super low hurdle, no judge will ever sanction you just because your claims later turn out to be wrong. Sir, she filed a paternity claim in August, August 1st. You are now claiming that you have photographs dated July 23rd of an alleged miscarriage. That means she had no good faith basis to file a paternity claim against a guy whose babies she was not carrying. This is absurd. There's something wrong with this person. I mean, at this point, I'm starting to think we need to do a deep dive into this man's uh, legal filings in other cases. The hell is this about? <sighs> That's not a bad thing. In the old days when people had disputes, they'd challenge you to a duel with pistols on Main Street at high noon. Fifty paces turn in fire. That's how disputes were resolved, children. Gather round, kindergartners. David Gingras is going to teach you about the law. Oh, Nicholas Starro Raid. Welcome, Raid. Gather round, children. Gingras is going to teach you about the law. Here we go. We want to encourage people to come to court rather than using violence or other means to solve a dispute. And as part of that, we know that sometimes people will bring claims that turn out to be wrong. Is he preparing us now for the, well, she's wrong, but oh well. <laughs> That's why I'm so confused at the angry Justice for Clayton fans who explain most of us are primarily interested in how to make sure this does not happen to any more men. False accusations help none of us. Yeah, okay, that's true. But in the world of false allegations, a mistaken, even groundless allegation of paternity is one of the easiest, quickest, and cheapest to disprove. Do you think Clayton feels the same way? Has this been easy for him? Has it been quick? Let's let's first let's go through the let's go through these charges here of easy, quick, and cheap. Easy. Was it easy for Clayton to lose his, uh, almost lose his career? For him to get canceled? Uh, for him to get canceled from his speaking engagements? Was that easy for him to have his name splashed in the newspapers? Uh, uh, calling him a, you know, a terrible person for... At wanting this person to get an abortion, even though it was her suggesting the abortion, but of course she didn't. She didn't tell the son that. Do you think it was easy for him to have the entire Bachelor Nation, except Dave Neal and Steve, Reality Steve, uh, 
talking about what a bad guy he was? Was that easy? Do you think it was easy for him to go into court and defend himself without a lawyer? Was it easy for him to get 500 text messages and emails from this woman stalk, getting stalked by her? Was that easy? Was it, okay, let's move on to cheap. Was it cheap? How much money did he pay for each of those DNA tests? I think it was $700 each. How much has he had to pay in lawyer's fees? More money than he has. He's in the hole now. It's definitely over a hundred and probably 150,000 by now. That's cheap to him? What world is this guy living in that that's cheap? And quick? Quick? Oh my God. Uh, it's been going on since May of 2023. We are coming up on a full year now. Next month, it will be a full year. That is not quick. Not to mention that he did try to get a DNA paternity test three times. One time the sample got lost. The other two came back little to no fetal DNA. And this woman still wouldn't give it up. She still said the testing was ongoing. I, I got to pull up that clip because that's like my favorite clip. <laughs> that's my favorite clip. The testing is ongoing. E easy and quick, he says. Easy and quick. I want you to just keep cheap, easy, and quick. <laughs> that sounds like we're describing someone. Hmm. <laughs> Fill in the blanks there. Uh, all right, let's see. DNA testing. Here it is. Wait. Correct. As we sit here today. Wait, I got a volume boost. A single DNA test has come back indicating that claims the father, correct? The samples were diluted and I'm going back next month is what it I would say. Yes or no question. It's a very simple question. As we sit here today, you have no DNA test that indicates that Clayton is the father, right? The result, the testing is ongoing is what I was told, <laughs> as with Clayton. So, so that's said not that difference. on a couple occasions, that the testing is ongoing. Correct. So is it your testimony that you provide these samples and that there's no results that are coming from these samples you're providing? I'm I'm unclear on what you're trying to ask me because they said that okay, I well, go back months to give another sample. As we yeah. All right. Hold on one second. Yeah, so the testing is ongoing. This this is, according to him, just the easiest thing to do. Just the easiest thing in the world to do is get a paternity test. Wham, bam. Thank you, ma'am. All done. Yes or no. This woman was told she wasn't pregnant with his twins twice, and she still persisted. She still continued. She did not drop her case. And for whatever reason, the court didn't make her drop the case. And nobody seemed to put in enough time and effort to really understand what was going on here with her. Mm-hmm. All right, let's get back over to this dumbass thing. Uh, which page was I on? Uh, yeah, okay, that's true. But in the world of false allegations, a mistake and even groundless allegation of paternity is one of the quickest, easiest, and cheapest to disprove. It's like shooting someone with a Nerf dart. 
any collateral damage is virtually zero. What? Do you think Clayton feels that he's not been damaged? Do you think Clayton thinks he wasn't damaged by this? That the damage was basically zero? I mean, I guess I don't even have to comment on this because it's so ridiculously bad. <sighs> Seriously, I know because it happened to me. Well, what happened to him was not anything like what happened to Clayton. Nothing like it. Let's assume for a second that Laura was never pregnant or maybe she was pregnant and Clayton wasn't the father. Or maybe Clayton was the father, but Laura unknowingly had a very early, unknowingly had a very early miscarriage. No, no, sir. You said she took pictures of the miscarriage, sent them to her mother and her sister and a telehealth medical provider who told her she had a miscarriage. So she didn't unknowingly have a miscarriage if that's what even happened. Which would explain a lot of the later events we've seen. Would it, though? Would it explain the ever-expanding belly? Would it explain her going from having a, uh, a a huge belly or a, no belly in September to a huge belly a week later? Come on. Come on. Hello, let's go, Brandon. You're unsubscribing? <laughs> to me? Okay. All right. Well, we'll see ya. I'm sorry. I don't know what I did today, but, you know, add it to the, uh, the great disappointing. <laughs> Unsubscribed. I don't, I don't know what for, but okay. I'm going to need more information than that. Could you fill out the form on your way out with the, uh, the review? so that I know exactly what it is that I'm doing wrong. Because, uh, you know, we care about your subscription here. And I would like to, <laughs> I would like to know, I would like to know if you could fill out the, uh, the survey on the way out uh, so I can care deeply about your little feelings. What F up yesterday? What, what happened yesterday? <laughs> Please drop it in the suggestion box on your way out. What what happened? What did I do yesterday? Oh, maybe YouTube unsubscribed him. Possibly. Oh, that that's a letdown because I was I was getting ready to have fun grilling him about it. Let's go, Brandon. Did YouTube unsubscribe you? YouTube had a really weird day yesterday. Yeah, it was very strange. He's out till morale improves. Sorry, but I have a headache. I have to keep the energy level a little down today because my head is pounding. Oh, I see. Are we supposed to unsub and resub? Maybe. Yeah. YouTube lost its damn mind yesterday. Oh, and you want to know what's hilarious? I was going to save this for later for Tug, um, which we'll just go over it to. This is so funny. I have to show this to you because it's so funny. Um, so... <laughs> In the what the hails case, <laughs> uh, the jokalist, uh, the fake journalist who thinks she's covering that case, had more to say last night. I guess she just she uh, she watches this channel um, religiously. This is so funny. Did you notice all of the viewers dropped off down to eighteen? After Jeremy Hales boo-hoo left because Fox wasn't giving him attention. I will get more views when I go live on Facebook than she gets all month. And I have not been live in a couple years. And I certainly won't invite J.H. to read Super Chats and ring the cash bell. Maybe I will take Groupie Fox up on an expose if she wants me to do it on her. Or maybe that's not much of a story just like sax parties. Who cares? I have an idea. Robert Beatty has been asking me for an interview for years. Maybe Fox is finally the perfect subject. <laughs> so she had no idea, I guess, that YouTube went down last night and everybody had the same thing happen. She thought that everybody left <laughs> because Jeremy Hales left. 
<laughs> Somebody posted, did you notice all the viewers dropped off down to 18? LMFAO, such a great fake journalist spreading lies without even research. Maybe look stuff up before opening your mouth. It was mentioned in the live as it was happening. Oh, look, YouTube had a problem. And there's the YouTube down. <laughs> oh, I just thought it was funny. Oh, my gosh. Well, Rachel, Rachel, where are you? If you left just because Jeremy was on, you missed a really great show. He wasn't on for the whole time. You don't have to like everybody I hang out with, but you missed a great show if you tuned out just because you didn't want to see Jeremy. She's, this woman is so funny. I hope she continues to keep making ridiculous posts. Oh, okay. Yeah, she was at the party, Rosalind. That's exactly right. <laughs> so she was there. All right, let me hit some of your super chats. Unhung Hero. Thanks for the groupie cash train. Can they get Jane Doe like Trevor Bowers accuser on felony fraud? That would be super awesome. So yeah, we're going to talk about that, whether it's today or at a different day. I, I, I believe there should be a creative way to do it. I think the major hurdle we have is that Trevor Bowers accuser was trying to shake him down for like $3 million. And so it meets the actual definition of extortion. Now, I believe that what Laura did to Clayton should be considered extortion. She was trying to destroy his career. There's written evidence. She went to the Arizona State Board of Licensing for Realtors. She went to his boss. She went to that uh, Hope Foundation where he was speaking and had him canceled from that event. Like, Sometimes rewards are other than monetary when it comes to extortion. She was basically saying, love me or I will destroy your life. That can't possibly be legal. And if it is legal, then the law needs to catch up and uh, do something about that. Jennifer Whitaker says he did not literally walk in Clayton's shoes. Sorry, but a pet peeve. <laughs> yeah, no, he didn't. And Colton McCabe. Thanks for the super chat. If you watch the status hearing, Corey Keith says something like, we have given discovery, albeit minimally. So he admitted discovery was only minimally provided, but Greg saying it is lying to court? Dumb. Yeah, exactly. It's not lying. He didn't lie. Sarah Adams, thanks for the super chat. Not in a gay way, but you look lovely today. Thanks, Sarah. Equality, thanks for the super chat. Happy belated birthday. Thank you for that. And Fletcher Boy says... Hangover fun for last night with Nick Ricada. Thank you. Hey, so if you guys are, you might want to check your subscription to see if you are unsubscribed. If, if YouTube did unsubscribe you, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Take a minute right now to hit that, that like button. We only have 298 likes and 897 of you here. Uh, so that's really not an acceptable thing. Um, make sure you hit that like button. Let's see, I'll start a poll. What kind of poll should we do? Oh, by the way, Rumble, last night, Rumble, I missed some of your Rumble rants, and I am really sorry about that. A couple of you sent some Rumble rants, some happy birthday messages, and I'm very sorry I missed it. I had too many windows open, and the Rumble chat was not available to me, and I forgot to check it. But I just want you to know I have you up in front of me today. I am looking at the chat, and I just wanted to say thank you to my Rumble peeps over there in the Rumble ghetto for the birthday uh, wishes and the Rumble Rants. I appreciate that. All right. If you are not subbed, make sure you still sub. What kind, what kind of poll should I do today? We need to do a poll about this blog post. Uh, what do we want to, what do we want to know about this? All right. Is Tramp Stamp Lawyer, that's TSL, <laughs> new blog and admission Laura is a liar. Ingress is a pig. <laughs> uh, Clayton is unreasonable. Or what's my fourth option? Um, YouTube is asshole. <laughs> there we go. That's always good to have it there. All right. There's a new poll. Go ahead and take that poll. 
Oh, man. I know. I am cranky today, Rogue Mama. That's true. <laughs> Mom is cranky today. <laughs> Please hit the like button, subscribe, and share. Maybe send super chats. <laughs> Mommy, don't spank me. <laughs> oh, Lord. All right. Let's get back to it. In any of those situations, whether she was never pregnant, was pregnant, he wasn't the father, maybe he was the father, but she unknowingly had a miscarriage. In any of those situations, is it really that big of a deal? I just don't see it that way. The only person making it a big deal is you know who and his legal team, cough, cough. He literally wrote that, literally. If Clayton wanted justice, all he had to do was exactly what I did. Just take a very simple test. David, he took three. He took three. Your client wouldn't accept the results. And the court, for some stupid ass reason, wouldn't either. Oh, my God. I can't. I can't. I, the yelling. I shouldn't have done the yelling. That was a mistake. Mistake. Go back. Just take a very simple test and let the results speak for themselves. He, he, does he know there were tests taken? He has to have known that there were tests taken. This should have taken about five minutes of his time and the total legal fees would have been zero dollars. And Laura would have lost and Clayton would have his justice, whatever that means. By the way, let, let's, let's make this very clear, David Gingras douche canoe esquire clayton did take the test when she tried in the beginning she wouldn't show up to the appointment for the paternity test she kept canceling his appointment so he would have an appointment to go and do the paternity swab or whatever and he would uh, call or go there and they'd say oh your your appointment was canceled and she filed on august 1st how how was he supposed to get a paternity test between uh, May, what he found out like on, in June, the beginning of June that she was allegedly pregnant. That's what she said. He found out in June and he was, he had until August to get this done, this paternity test allegedly when they couldn't even find a place that could do twins. And as soon as he could, he took the test. He had to force her into taking it. Do you remember? He posted online that he had taken his paternity swab and was just waiting for her to do her part. And that was what made her do it because he went public with it and said he had done his. I mean, this is so absurd. Uh, much like his client, MG Law, he is very full of shit. <sighs> Bullshit. You know, I can't deal with this. I'm going to nuke America. All right, let's move on. That's why I just don't understand this anti-Laura mob mentality. Personally, I think when this all comes out in court, people are going to realize they were completely wrong about Laura. Like, completely. <laughs> But this is the best part. But even if I'm wrong and Laura has lied about everything, so freaking what? I personally have a judgment that proves beyond any doubt that the Arizona general brought a false paternity claim against me, which took literally five minutes of my time and exactly zero dollars to disprove. It was over so fast. All I lost was maybe one hour of my time. Sir, are you dumb or something? Clayton's been in court with this woman since last August, and the attorney general's office isn't a person. So, the, of course, the attorney general's office didn't maliciously do anything to you. They brought a claim brought by somebody else that was false. All they know is she told them you're the dad. So you should, the, the woman is the one who brought the false claim against you, not, not the attorney general. It was her. Yeah, really? So what? She tried to ruin a man's life over a lie. And his, do you think the court 
MG, do you think the court is going to look favorably on an officer of the court who thinks it's no big deal to tell lies? Perjury. What we're talking about here is perjury. She perjured herself under oath multiple times. In fact, I think I have that clip. Let's see. So you understand that Clayton has been very clear from day one. No, it's not that one. It's this one. And Miss. Here we go. Perjury. And he's okay with this to multiple men. Perjury regarding multiple men. Miss Miss Owens' pattern, her modus operandi, her pattern of behavior, her pattern of making the same claims against other men in the state of Arizona within the last two years. And I think it's highly relevant to this case because it supports why Mr. Eckert needs this injunction against harassment because this individual has done this before and there are concerns that she will not stop. They, uh, I'm going to sustain the objection. I'm not going to allow that testimony. And Your Honor, I would ask again the court to reconsider here because this matter, it's very important that the court hears how Ms. Owens has made the exact same allegation in another matter within the last two years and that she has committed perjury in her last in the last hearing because she made incorrect statements she made false i didn't notice her lawyer before look at her lawyer trying to stop her look at him waving his arm at her like stop this behavior just stop making a fool out of yourself watch her lawyer hearing because she made incorrect statements she made false <laughs> Let's see that again. Oh, he goes, he actually mouths stop at her. Well, watch this. In the last hearing, because she made in <laughs> she made false statements under oath regarding the nature of that. And Ms. Yeah, false Ms. statements under oath. And David Gingras, what does he say again? It's no big deal. I don't get what the big deal is. So freaking what? So freaking what? Right there. So freaking what? So freaking what? Even if she's lied about everything, so freaking what? Can we file a bar complaint now? Is this enough, MG, for a bar complaint that a lawyer went on the record and said it's no big deal if someone commits perjury under oath? Perjurious statements are no big deal. Is that enough for a complaint? Because I feel like that's where we're headed here. So freaking what? A woman. Well, you know what? Maricopa County doesn't see it that way. Maricopa County is actually going after Trevor Bauer's false accuser now. Uh, for she's facing 16 years. Let's look at that real quick. I think I have some time. I've got like 15 minutes left. Uh All right, let's look at this article on TMZ. SA accuser charged after allegedly defrauding baseball star. A woman who accused Trevor Bauer of sexual assault, oh shoot, I just said it, has been hit with a criminal charge after she allegedly defrauded the former Cy Young winner into paying her for an abortion he believes never happened. And by the way, guys, make sure to send the super chats because I just got demonetized for saying words that are written in news articles. We're not allowed to say on YouTube because YouTube is asshole. How's that poll going, by the way? Let's see. 52% of you have decided Laura's a liar. 29% uh, say Gingras is a pig. And 17% say YouTube is asshole. And I can't, I can't disagree. All right. The charge, fraudulent screen, fraudulent schemes and artifices. Now, I want to look that up in the law. C 
criminal charge Arizona. Revised statute 132310, fraudulent schemes and artifices, classification, any person who pursuant to a scheme or artifice to defraud knowingly obtains any benefit by means of false or fraudulent pretenses, representations, promises, or material omissions is guilty of a class two felony. You know what this doesn't say? It doesn't say that the benefit was monetary. It says any benefit. And we know that Laura got a benefit out of this. She got to play the victim in. She got to play the victim in this soap opera in the press. She got to play the victim. That's her benefit. She got to get her 15 minutes. She got to do a TEDx talk. How is that not a benefit? She got attention. Thank you, Sarah. Attention is a payoff. It says here, this offense does not require reliance on the part of any person if the benefit involved has a value of $100,000 or more, or if the offense relates to the manufacture, sale, or marketing of opioids, the convicted person is not eligible for suspension of sentence. Okay, so the benefit involved has a value of $100,000 or more. Well, how much value is attention in the press worth? How much money did she make? By boosting her career and her podcast with her TEDx talk about all this crap. Isn't that a benefit worth at least $100,000 or more? I mean, I feel like a creative prosecutor could figure that out. All right, let's go back to the article. Was formally filed against Darcy Esmanu, Esmanu in Arizona on Monday, weeks after a Maricopa County grand jury indicted her on the felony count. I don't know what's going on in Maricopa County with you women, but you better pull your shit together and quit doing this. According to a video statement Bauer posted on his YouTube page Tuesday, it stems from allegations Esmanu made against the former Dodger star in a 2023 lawsuit. This woman, could you put a, could she have more filters on her face in this picture? It actually looks like her entire head has been photoshopped on a different body and the head has been put through all these weird filters. Look how bright the whites of the eyes are. Do you see this? That is not a natural looking face. Very weird. She looks like an AI, uh, an AI conglomeration or something. What's the word I'm looking for? I don't know. My words are not working today. You'll have to forgive me. The woman alleged in her papers that Bauer arped her during a 2020 encounter and got her pregnant. In a countersuit, Bauer denied any wrongdoing, but he, he did say he had consensual sex with her one time in December of 2020 when the condom he had been using broke. Well, that's why you shouldn't be screwing around with strangers. He claimed in his countersuit that after their hookup, as Manu told him she was pregnant and wanted more than $1 million to terminate it. Bauer claimed he would support her decision before he gave her $8,761 for the cost she eventually said it took to end the alleged pregnancy. Who believes that it cost $8,700 for an abortion? So her big problem was that she asked for money. If she had done this and not asked for money, but was just, you know, threatening him with, well, I'll have the babies then and drag you through paternity court for the rest of your damn life. Thank you. The word was amalgamation that I was looking for. Thank you, Slidey Pie. My brain's not working this morning. I was close. <laughs> I was close. However, in his video statement on Tuesday, Bauer said she never had an abortion because she was never even pregnant. He added that it was all corroborated by her own medical records. Sound familiar? Bauer said authorities were made aware of all of this after they initiated an investigation into her essay allegations against him. Court records show Esmanu was also charged with fraud due to her interactions with a man named Mario Bresciani. I really want to hear about this case. There, there is no, um, there is no 
record of his case anywhere that I can find. I mean, there are some on the court docket. I'm hoping to get it. Um, but uh, no, I'm itching my eye. My eye is itchy. I have allergies. Court records. Oh, let's see. In addition, the records show she was charged with felony theft by extortion for wrongdoing against Bresciani as well. Her MO is clear, Bauer said, of the newly filed charges. Lie to men to get their money. Extort them if she must. When they refuse to pay, stop paying or give her or stop giving her what she wants, go to the police, accuse them of SA and file a civil suit against them to retaliate. Bauer stated he's hopeful he can now get another crack at pitching in the MLB again soon. What else do I have to do to prove that this entire situation has been a massive lie? He said, this is insane. At what point do I go get to go back to work and continue earning a living? Yeah. It's uh, very strange. So, and it's great. It's great that, that his accuser is going to face actual jail time. Now the, the other one, Lindsay, she's not facing any jail time and she should be. Um, let me bring up his video that I did not get to go through yesterday. Oh, it actually might be right here in this article. Hold on. Although I bet TMZ has put a, well, we'll, we'll try. One of the women who accused me of sexual assault just got indicted for committing felony fraud against me. Imagine that. Uh, let me catch up to speed. In the last three years, two women have taken legal action against me. Uh, Lindsay Hill started all this. You may remember her from this video as the girl who set me up and lied to the world in an attempt to take my money. Yeah, nothing happened to her. Nothing. Well, today, the only other one, Darcy Adana Asimono, has been criminally indicted for committing felony fraud against me and another man. So now she's facing up to 16 years in prison. Her claims are even more absurd than Lindsay's were. So here's some of the details. We had one plain sexual encounter in December of 2020. Nothing that could be considered remotely rough. Uh, she initiated it, but don't take my word for it. Take hers. This is a picture and text message she sent me the next morning explaining why she came on to me. God, this text is so cringe. I, I don't even want to read it. I'll have to change my voice to do it. I guess you smelled cocky and confident with slight stubble. Hmm, I did make that comment that your shoulders looked broad and strong. My feminine lenses were on. And for months afterward, she repeatedly requested to sleep with me again. I just want to sleep next to you again. I will be very quiet. Promise. And I will sleep, though. In the morning, I'll have to leave, and I will slip out with a blink. Uh, for example, this. I'm not certain, but can I sleep over there later? I'm not certain if, but can I sleep there? It's peaceful for me. This text from January 7th, 2021. At one point, she even requested a sample of my sperm so she could have my child whenever she wanted to in the future. That's perfectly normal, right? Now, it's hard to keep track, but she's made at least four seven-figure demands over the last few years, uh, more than a year after the one time we slept together and only after Lindsay Hill made up her false allegations, Adana retained a lawyer. Uh, she then demanded $3.6 million and claimed I forced her to have an abortion, leaving her emotionally devastated and irretrievably damaged by it. But uh, here's the thing, she never had an abortion because she was never even pregnant. And that's corroborated by her own medical records. Uh, when I refused to pay her the $3.6 million she was asking for, she made up a bogus sexual assault claim and filed a civil suit against me. In that version of her story, she claimed for the first time, by the way, uh, that there was non-consensual sex. But her texts from the next morning show what actually happened. Remember this text in which she explains why she came on to me? Uh, she also claims that instead of an abortion, she actually had a miscarriage. But that's impossible, of course, because again, she was never even pregnant. Uh, we now have emails between her and the first two law firms that dropped her in which they acknowledge they never had any evidence to support her claims, but they'll try. Let's see what this says. I missed that. I missed the first one. law firms that dropped her in which they acknowledge they never had any. To confirm without proof of the abortion or even the date of the abortion, we cannot continue to represent you. We urge you to consult with other attorneys who may have different standards. They should have sent her to Gingras. Because he clearly has different standards. Any evidence to support her claims, but they'll... Great. I appreciate your time and input today, and I'm glad we can agree. 750 k to $3.6 million as a settlement bracket. As explained on the phone, we will start high and understand the lowest you will accept to settle is 750 k Have a beautiful day, Adana. Yikes.
try to get my money anyway. I then shared an audio recording I have in which Adana contradicts her own claims and asks me for money. Then the emails her lawyer. Hi, Adana. As your legal counsel, we have all agreed that the recording is detrimental to your case to the point that we will very likely not be able to continue representation of you on this matter. We are requesting a copy of the recording to verify the authenticity. I know this is difficult news, but without the medical records of your abortion in a recording like this, this is what we feel is insurmountable. Hugs. Lawyers agreed that that's insurmountable evidence, and they informed Madonna that they can no longer represent her unless she can provide documentation or proof of her claims. And of course, she couldn't do that, so the law firm urged her to consult other law firms with different standards. Now, Adana has filed more than 10 police reports claiming sexual assault or harassment against other men, including at least one other professional athlete. But after the Sound familiar? Harassment? Reporting men to the police for harassment? Scottsdale police completed their investigation into her claim against me, she's the one being indicted for felony fraud. And not just against me, against another man as well. Uh, she made up bogus sexual assault claims and attempted to extort him too. And it gets worse. In my lawsuit against her, we subpoenaed a witness whom she knew for relevant documents to use in our case. And when she found out, she immediately made sexual assault claims against him too. Uh, her MO is clear. Lie to men to get their money, extort them if she must, and when they refuse to pay, stop paying or stop giving her what she wants, go to the police, accuse them of sexual assault, and file a civil suit against them to retaliate. And just so, so the law appears to cover this situation where women are trying to get money when they do this, but the law does not appear to cover a situation where women, the pleasure, they're getting just personal pleasure out of doing this to a man without asking for money. Now, one of you in the chat gave a very good, um, made a very good point. SC Junk said a paternity suit from zero to 18 plus years has to be worth $100,000. It does. And yes, us lay people would be like, duh, the court costs alone. Clayton's already in 150 at least. However, the law doesn't look at lawsuits that way because it's a legal means to file a grievance, right? So I think the only thing that she could be charged with is perjury. I mean, this is really frustrating. This is something the legislature in Arizona has to work out. Because how can one woman get away with this and another woman faces 16 years in jail? It's unequal application of the law. And while Laura isn't the smartest uh, bulb in the pack, she has skirted that line um, effectively, it seems, according to the law. So no one can say, well, he still has two other accusers. Just because the first two are complete frauds doesn't mean the others are. Here's a couple of facts about them. They both had lawyers first demand in excess of $3 million to not go public. Uh, in both cases, only after I refused to pay any sum of money did the lawyers make anonymous claims in the media. They both had the opportunity to file a criminal complaint against me. Neither of them did. They both had the opportunity to file a civil suit against me. Neither of them did. They both had the opportunity to participate in Lindsay Hill's civil suit against me. They could have even done so anonymously. They both refused. One of them even submitted a statement to the court stating that she never made public accusations against me. The other refused to participate so vehemently that Lindsay Hill took legal action against her trying to force her to participate. She still refused. So they both had the opportunity to testify under penalty of perjury. Neither of them did. One can only wonder why. Uh, perhaps it's because all of their claims against me are lies. Now, it's been two years since these women and their lawyers attempted to weaponize anonymous claims in the media against me to take my money. I addressed them at the time, and as far as I'm concerned, it's in the past. But if there comes a time in the future where I need to defend myself further, I will not hesitate to do so. Uh, for now, there's no reason to speak further on this topic, though, because outside of Adana, who's now been indicted with felony fraud, there are no claims against me, no ongoing investigations, and no outstanding lawsuits. At this point, I'm not sure what else I can possibly do to prove my innocence in all this. I did not do what I was accused of. And every institution that our society is entrusted to rule on issues like these, like courts, judges, law enforcement officers, prosecutors, they all agree with me. They've rejected every single claim made against me, even going as far as charging one of my accusers with a felony. If any evidence of any of these claims actually existed, I would have been charged or at the very least arrested, but that never happened. What else do I have to do to prove that this entire situation has been a massive lie? This is insane. At what point do I get to go back to work and continue earning a living? 
Well, for one, wipe that spit off your lip. <laughs> that would help. <laughs> but it's true. Why, why is it that he can't get a tryout? Um, why is the MLB still keeping him out of the game? Um, it's unfortunate. It's unfair. And I, I'm definitely going to be following whatever uh, the case against Adana. We definitely want to see that. Because this is going to be one of the, it's going to be a precedent setting case. I think we need more. I, I talked about this with Nick last night. I don't understand why we don't have more prosecutions of these false accusers. They need to go to jail. Let's send them to jail. Um, it, straight to jail. Where's my button? Where's my button? Right to jail. Right away. Right away. Right to jail. <sighs> yeah, it's a playbook. All right, let's get to the super chance. Candy. Candy DeVos, thanks for the super super sticker. Appreciate that. Sarah says, you still loving the pimp, show, pimp shoes, yeah? All right. Uh, yep, yeah, of course, the pimp shoes are great. The Japanese Yakuza, uh, thank you for the Japanese money. Says sent, I appreciate that. KW, thanks for the super chance. Says, have you seen fake a baby website yes we've been over that here multiple times and i don't know how those places continue to operate ninja puppy says thank you for the quality content I'm really enjoying your videos well thanks for being here i appreciate you being a subscriber rogue mama thanks for the super chat says let's get hashtag extortion abortions trending on x extortion abortions Ooh, that's a good one max bang wants to know do turtles have earlobes i don't know it's a good question. And I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen with this situation, but whatever happens, I'll be there to cover it. So uh, thanks for hanging out with me today. I think, let me check over on Rumble, see how you guys are doing over there. Everybody on Rumble's doing good. I did not check on the Locals Live's live chat. Uh, let me check on you guys over there. There you are. Okay, everything is going well over there. By the way, follow me on locals, meganfox.locals.com, where we are doing fun things all the time. We, we're, I gotta get some more locals only content going. We're, we're gonna do some more stuff. I gotta, we gotta get back to reading Greg's book. I think we're on chapter seven and eight. Um, so we'll do that. We'll do, we'll do another reading on locals soon. I'm, I'm reading through Greg Anderson's book. Uh, what's it called? Iron 44 about the uh, groundbreaking lawsuit that he brought against GE after a deadly helicopter crash uh, in, I don't know, the early 2000s during a firefighting thing. It's a very exciting book. We've been really enjoying it there. So make sure you're following me over there, meganfox.locals.com. You can follow me there for free if you just want to get notifications. If you want to sign up, it's only $5 a month. Uh, ha the promo code is tonsil twins. You'll get two free months when you sign up using all caps tonsil twins. Tomorrow night, uh, Tug and I are going to be doing a live stream on his channel, our regular Thursday night thing. I don't know what we'll be going over there, but I'm going to try and talk him into watching the uh, hearings, Laura Owens hearings uh, with me. I know we've watched them here on this channel, but I've been watching them back again and I'm just picking up more and more stuff. Um, that is just, it's, it's bizarre. Oh, and guess what? There are also hearings, Greg Gillespie hearings on schnitzel ninjas channel. So we're going to do that too. Okay. Let me see who else is live streaming right now. Let's see if I can have somewhere to send you. Mm hmm. Redirect. By the way, thanks to everybody who came out last night for the birthday stream. That was a lot of fun. Recovery Addict is streaming AZ v. George Allen Kelly. Uh, and then his top mark media has Idaho v. Chad Daybell, just a live stream of that. And who else? Looks like that's about it of the people I know. Uh, okay, we'll send you over to Recovery Addict because Scott's great. I don't know if you guys saw Scott come on the show last night and sing me the happy birthday song. 
It was so fantastic. I love him so much. So go over and tell Scott that I said hello and uh, hang out with him. He's uh, doing the Mexico border shooting trial, day 14, part two. So you guys will be redirected over to Recovery Addict. I love Scott too. Scott's a great guy and I'm just so happy to know him. And, uh, and so go over there and tell him I said hello. All right. That's it for me. I'm going to get out of here today. I got it. My kids are home and I'm going to go make snacks and do all the mom things. And uh, yeah, that's what I'm doing. All right. Here we go. <laughs> Lost my world is near its end. I almost felt my head is full of a million choices. I am alive, I'm not here to pretend. I love my friends, my heart is filled with a million voices. Oh, this road has many choices. Oh, in my heart, million voices. Come next to me, my friend, embrace the sky. I'm not afraid to fly. It's not the time to say goodbye. in there with yeah. a string of garlic and, and some holy water. <laughs> across. Across. <laughs> yeah. May the power yeah. of Christ oh, compel no. you. No, I don't. You realize this house was infested with sucky business. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Sucky you loaders. <laughs> I don't remember saying it now. So no wonder he said that. drown her before you burn <laughs> her. <laughs> Oh my God! Uh, yeah. Your next witness. Now I know why you put a drowner. Laces. Your next that is witness also was in Romania. <laughs> <laughs> that is in the